Salutations at de la Mer's house. So um, Walter de la Mer is um, known for having been an author of the early 20th century. So I'm in Twickenham in London. This is called South End House, which dates back to the mid um, 18th century. It's quite a distinguished personage who had it built. Trouble is, I can't remember who. I don't know if he had the whole building or just this half of it. It's divided into two halves now. You can see the fence dividing the two halves. It's not open to the public, it's privately owned. But um, I hope they don't object to me filming. I have the absolute right to film. I mean, if you live in a house with a blue plaque on it, put up by English Heritage, you have to expect people to come and gawp at it and film at it. So Walter de la Mer, he was born um, just outside London in the village of Charlton um, in 1873 uh, into a, into a, a well-to-do middle-class family. His father was quite high up um, in uh, the Bank of England. So there were, there were seven children in the family. I think all of them made it to adulthood. Um, so so Walter de la Mer, he had a fairly happy um, childhood. He, um, so Charlton would now be considered part of London. Need this Charlton Athletic football team. It's, it was in Kent back then, but that bit of that county has been absorbed into London. Um, his surname, de la Mer, it betrays Huguenot origins, as in around 1685, um, his family shifted from France to this country. They were Protestants and they were discriminated against Louis XIV. He um, uh, revoked the Edict of Nantes that year. So the Sun King decided that the French Protestant minority must be severely discriminated against. Okay, so what else about um, De La Mer? <clears throat> anyway, he was a choir boy in St. Paul's Cathedral, went to the cathedral school, which is not St. Paul's school, not the, not the famous school. Um, by the time he was old enough to go to it, it shifted to Barnes, not, uh, sorry, shifted to Hammersmith, not so far from here. And obviously in the 1960s, shifted to Barnes, which is again, even closer to here, um, because we're, we're in uh, Twickenham. Anyway, uh, in the borough of Richmond upon Thames. So um, he, uh, he started working um, in a bank himself and did various business jobs, worked for a few companies, was, re was really in the commercial world, didn't go on to third level education, but writing was his first love. He dabbled in, in amateur dramatics as well. So quite, quite gifted at Amdram. And uh, the, the scope of his writing is really quite astonishing. Some full length novels, novellas, um, poesy. Uh, he composed uh, children's stories and he tried to recapture and keep alive that childlike imagination, which he felt was so often lost, lost to adults. They were sometimes embarrassed, suppressed it in themselves, became too rational, things like that. But no, he wanted to keep it going. He, think, he thought it was something to, to cherish and nurture. And uh, so this has perpetuated his, his memory uh, the fact that he was able to, um, with an adult sensibility and vocabulary, still uh, write in a childlike manner, write in a way that's appealing to uh, children. Um, so, although he lived through an era of political turmoil, he was seemingly oblivious to this upheaval, was not a very political person. Remember, he was a middle aged at the time of the First World War, um, there was the Irish Home Rule Crisis. Socialism became a, a motor force of the politics of many countries. Uh, there was a, the, the Russian Revolution um, and there's the Weimar Republic and there was the rise of Nazism in the Second World War. But he doesn't, doesn't appear to be particularly animated by political questions. And so many writers of the early 20th century were politically engaged, particularly they were, they were left wing ones. And he moved in very distinguished circles. He was a close friend of Lady Ottilin Morrill, a family that they, they were part of the Beeridge they made a fortune in, in, in brewing, and they had um, a uh, large house just outside Oxford. I think it was Garsington. So he knew her and used to go and socialize with those sort of people, Fabians and so forth. So he wasn't quite in the Bloomsbury set. We are a few miles from Bloomsbury, but you didn't have to be strictly in that area of Bloomsbury to count as one of their number. Um, anyway, he was married. Uh, he had a few children, had a rather happy marriage, um, and he, he made plenty of money from his books, uh, Walter de la Mer. Um, and and they, he, his wife um, contracted uh, Parkinson's in, um, in 1940. He's contracted the right word. Anyway, she's diagnosed with that, with that degenerative disease, a bit like Sir Billy Connolly has now. That's why he's, he's reaffirmed that he's never performing on stage again. Just read that today. So it's my lasting regret that we'll never have seen Sir Billy um, live. Anyhow, so um, his wife uh, declined very rapidly, um, and such was the rapidity of her fall into uh well being an invalid that he was un he was really unable to cope with it that dealt him a very heavy blow so it cast a pall or a pall over his last years so she, she died in um 1943 by which time she could scarcely articulate so he became ill himself soon suffered coronary thrombosis and another one was to kill him nine years later 
He died in 1956, died indeed in this house, and he was very close to the nurse who cared for him in his dotage. And in his declining years, he said that he had romantic feelings for this woman, but uh, they were never physically expressed. Perhaps he was incapable of doing so by that stage in his life. I'm not quite sure where he is um, laid to rest. And now, perhaps not coincidentally, this is the very same street, Montpellier Row, where um, uh, Alfred Law Tennyson had resided almost a century previously, well, had moved in here almost a century previously. I don't think Tennyson was here towards the end of his life because he had another place on Eaton Square in the centre of London. You can see down there, you see that gable end? You see it above my thumb here? That 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 is where um, Lord Tennyson was living. Um, okay, so uh, that's probably enough about Walter, Walter Delamere. I don't know that much about him. I'm not that much of a fan, I will confess. So we live very close to the Thames, just beyond those trees. Beyond those trees is the River Thames, which he could see from his house. OK, I'll sign off now. So please keep up with your donations on Patreon. Uh, Patreon. PayPal's even better. GeorgeCallahan79 at gmail.com. And book me as your tour guide in London. And choose me for online lessons in English, literature, English as a foreign language, history, politics, religious studies, um, French, law, and so forth. Uh, right, cheery bye-bye.